What's good, YouTube? You're back on S Motorsports. Today, we're doing the first fire up on the LS Swap Trans Am. guys like i said today we're doing the first fire up we got steve from build season here he's gonna help me out we're gonna go through the process and kind of the checklist of the last few things we need to do to get this ready to fire up and make sure that we have a good first fire up and we don't blow it up that's usually the goal yep that's the plan <laughs> should probably go over in the last video you saw i finished the fuel system and like i said we will show you we'll we'll prime it We'll show you the wiring I mess I got going on in there. Um, I did hook up the battery, obviously, and you guys have kind of seen some of these cabling and grounds and stuff that I got going on. But kind of the last, the last stuff that we need to do to make sure that it's ready to fire up, we're just gonna have at it. We really don't have too much left to do. I wanna hook up like a temporary exhaust, fill a little bit more of trans fluid, um, and check for leaks with the fuel system. It's always a good thing to do before you first fire up. And got some water going in the radiator already. And then it's time to fire it up. Cause this thing's gonna sound pretty nasty, I think. <laughs> All right, well, let's have at her. So to start out with, obviously, once you get your engine in, you're gonna be reusing a lot of your old uh, F-body stuff. Obviously, factory, battery, or same position. I just reconnected the grounds and the positive to the starter just like you would in your normal small block Chevy. So I have all that connected. We connected the battery. Obviously when you're first connecting that, you wanna kinda be careful and make sure that you don't uh, have any major sparks or anything going funky. And, and obviously when I connected it, there was nothing like that. So that was good. If you guys wanna see an example of what that's like, check out the video where we hook up the battery to my Datsun. We had a dead short ground trying to melt the battery cable. Ooh, yeah, that's a... Uh... That'd be no good. And so then now, like I said, we have the harness in here, which I did use an Amazon harness and I will put a link in the description because so far I'm pretty happy with the harness, but I have, uh, I'm using a stock 411 uh, PCM, which then I'm going to be tuning with HP tuners. So I have my dongle hooked up. And so the next step is we can turn the car on and see if we can connect to the, the wiring, which is also gonna fire the fuel pump. So you'll probably hear that. And I can show you that as well. Maybe I'll show you the fuel pump first. I have I have the uh, port in here, just a janky thing wired up so that we can get pressure tap to make sure to set our fuel pressure. So if uh, Steve, you can cycle the key and boom, 60 PSI. So when he lets off the key, it does go down. Um, but yeah, so I already kind of cycled the key and I had to rotate this on the pressure regulator to get that to 60 PSI or 58 PSI as a LS spec, but I'm basically at 60. Um, and I do probably have a little leak from this fitting, which obviously I will take out once it's all good. So now that we know we have the correct fuel pressure, Steve kind of already cycled the key, but um, so I did throw the dash back in as well, which this isn't gonna exactly work great, but now that we have the key on and we have our HP tuners plugged in, we can try and connect to the, the PCM. But obviously we are, we are getting data at this point. You can see intake air temp 75. That's, I think that's what temperature it is in here. I, oh yeah, that's spot on. That's awesome because that intake air temp is actually, I rewired uh, from a LS1 to an LS3 style MAF card. So that's that's good. And then uh, the other thing to check is oil pressure, which we probably won't have, which we will be double checking that. It says we have two PSI, so that's, you know, probably not, not right at this point. But once we start priming the engine, we'll double check that that PSI um, you know, is increasing some to make sure that we have oil pressure because this is how we're gonna tell if we have engine oil pressure because my gauge up here isn't gonna work because I have a different oil pressure sender 
in the back of the block for like a V6 gauge, which I am going to be swapping to, which has a higher mile per hour. So we are connected. It kind of verifies that the wiring is good. I haven't tried cranking it yet, but that's gonna be after we kind of verify and get everything else uh, straightened out. There, it's not gonna matter. Yeah. So what Steve was saying is we're kind of going around and checking all the fittings. And one thing to check too is obviously the, your fuel pump, as I'm not sure if you guys heard it prime, but I left the cover off and everything so I could check for that and we can look once it's running. But um, you know, I don't feel any fuel or anything on your fingers. Um, so we should be good to go there. And um, let me jump to the bench and I'll show you what I use to try and eliminate fuel leaks. So guys, to eliminate fuel leaks on all of my AN fittings, I'm using these Earls. Um, they're they're kind of repair fittings or gaskets for in between the AN lines. And I've had really good luck with these on the Camaro as well. When I did the E85 sensor, uh, I had a little bit of a leak and I used this and boom, it was gone. And I think this is, works pretty good because I've used it on all of the fittings, every single one, dash six or eight or whatever. And it seems like these take care of the leak right away. They are a little bit pricey, but kind of eliminates leaks from the start. One other thing we want to mention, if you have an automatic transmission, this is a 4L80 attached to the 6.0 in here. Before you fire the engine, obviously make sure that the thing is full of trans fluid. If you're like me and you do one of these and it's your first time, put transmission fluid in but it's never enough usually and uh, I tried to drive mine before it was full and it acted like the transmission was out of it uh, came back in it needed like two more quarts so Eric's gonna finish topping that off so we now know that we have fuel system that doesn't leak and now we have a transmission that's up to level and we've got water in it like you said before so I think the next step now we're gonna throw a temporary exhaust on this thing so it doesn't piss off all the neighbors and then we're gonna prime it all right, guys. Now this isn't super scientific, but me and Steve just threw a temporary exhaust on there. We just used some old flexi pipe three inch and hooked it up to just the pipe. As you can see, we got to just right there. I mean, it's just ending, but trying to do something here so it's not open headers so we can maybe hear the engine a little bit better. Um, plus it's probably gonna sound cool, straight pipe, so. Trying to make it just a little bit, get that sound out the back of the car so we can hear the engine a little bit more. So obviously, you know, when I assembled the engine, I used the proper, you know, lubricants and, and grease and stuff, assembling the cam and uh, the valve train and stuff. But next we're going to prime the engine and we'll show you how to do that on an LS as it's a little bit different than an old small block Chevy where you use the, the guy in the distributor hole to spin the oil pump. This can't really spin the uh, oil pump because it is connected to the crankshaft. So you have to do it uh, with a different way, which is that garden sprayer. So we'll bust that out next. Okay, so right under here, let's see, let's see how can we can you see it? it? Right there, that guy. We're gonna take that guy out, thread in an adapter. It's an M16 thread. So I'll put a link in the description of the adapter I got. It's just a cheapy one off Amazon. And then uh, basically a, a barb, hose barb to go to the uh, sprayer. And then we're gonna take that out, then pump oil in here. And this is the passageway for, that goes from the oil pump to the back of the engine to the oil filter. So this will fill the whole passage, the oil filter, and then it'll start going through the engine. This okay. is exciting, this is like the last step before fire up. So I should say, I think I maybe mentioned it already in a different video, but I am using uh, Amsoil break-in oil. Just something good to do to make sure that your ring seat good. Um, it, I mean, for how much money I spent on this engine, it's a small cost. To just... How much money you spent on your $500 LS swap? Yeah, $500 LS swap. Yep. Yeah, $500 sure. times seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. look, it's red. That's got to be good. It matches the car. Right? Oh man. Do you think they sell oil that, that is floor. the color of like moldy green for the Datsun? I don't know. Royal purple. So this is a very expensive aftermarket tool that's specifically designed for this purpose. It's made by Chapin. Chapin, Chapin, you whatever that is. You can get it on Amazon, but it's $5 more. Or you could go to Menards for $10. $10 for an LS oil priming tool right there, right? It's perfect. It's 
worth it. All right, we're gonna get oil in this. And then Eric wants to actually rotate the engine while we're priming it. So one of us is gonna be down here pumping oil in. We're gonna be monitoring oil pressure on the computer to just yeah. verify that the oil pressure comes up. But we're also gonna rotate the engine by hand just to make sure that as many passages and places as possible get filled with pressurized oil before we crank it. Yep. It was saying 2.2 before, so now we're looking for oil pressure. And it's gonna take a little bit because the sensor is on the back of the block up here. So it's gotta fill up that whole passageway. It's gotta fill up the oil filter, and then it's gotta come up to the oil pressure sender, which is at the top back of the motor before we start seeing pressure. But yeah, as long as it's not dumping out all over the floor. Hold on. Oh yeah, we gotta put the handle, we gotta squeeze it, huh? Yep. Let's zip tie that, huh? We could, yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have the valve. I made my own tool like this and I cut the handle completely off and uh, the only way to relieve the pressure is to undo this and I've sprayed myself in the face with gear oil a few times. I don't recommend it. <laughs> that's, that'll work. Yep. That'll work. All right, now we might be doing something. Steve's good at pumping, so. <laughs> 60 PSI! Is that what it's No. <laughs> it's still at two. Oh! Yep, we're getting pressure. Nice! It's up to 11 PSI already. Alright, we're gonna rotate the engine. Uh, try and get this to all the passages. I was just rotating the engine. Steve's gonna do it and show it quick, but when I was rotating the engine, we heard sound and we're like, what is that? Is that the air coming through the air filter? And no, the, the, the ECU actually saw that the engine was spinning over and it primes the fuel pump then, or it kicks it on because it thinks that it's trying to start. And then it also, cracked it cracked the injectors to, to spray fuel in, which it hadn't before. And I, I wasn't sure when you keyed on if it did it automatically, but it, doesn't do it until it sees engine rotation, but it kicks on the fuel pump. So that's probably good. We don't want to spin it too much because we don't want to flood the engine. I'm getting antsy, Steve. Want to fire this baby up. Steve, we got two quarts fed into the car. We saw oil pressure. We should be good to go. We dumped another quart in, so we have a total of six quarts in this F-body pan, which is five and a half. Six quarts seems like the uh, recommended amount from people on the forums. Steve is putting the fitting back in. All right, we're gonna get the camera set up and get ready for the first fire up. All right, guys, we got some cameras set up. I think we're good to go. I'm just going to bump it. Okay, check the starter. Check the starter, because okay. I haven't even tried that yet. I don't know. All right. I'll, uh... Okay. All right. Starter works. Nice. That was quick. Oh, I did see engine pressure shoot up. Yeah. 
It's not losing fuel pressure. You got oil pressure? I'm gonna take a guess that I am. So here's what we found. You guys probably saw in the last clip that the thing was firing up and it would run awesome for like eight to 10 seconds and then it would nose dive. Eric was taking a data log at that time and what we found was there, there is a multiplier, this is HP tuners by the way, uh, there's a multiplier for the coolant timing or coolant temperature timing advance. So there's a table in HP tuners where you can actually set up for some specific timing retard or advance based on coolant temperature. And what he had done or what was in the tune was actually kind of a technique used on Gen 4s to kind of prevent piston slap when the engine is warming up. So because the engine is a little cold, it was actually commanding like 13 degrees less timing than it should. So it was actually trying to run at like negative eight degrees or something. So it would run good for 10 seconds and then it would nose dive. We've got that fixed, we're gonna try it again. Surprised that didn't make a much bigger mess. Yep. Is something else pulling timing too? Uh, the timing looked good there. Okay. But now it seems like it's dying off faster. guys it's getting late we probably already pissed the neighbors <laughs> off <laughs> well i'm one of your neighbors and yeah so shit, but... didn't piss you off right. so we got it fired it does run i think uh there's a lot more tweaking that i have to do uh as a for a startup file i think it needs some more base airflow and maybe a few other things on the uh throttle enrichment i will look into that but I'm glad I already have a muffler on this thing, uh, or it will, because this thing is loud. <laughs> so, but it was starting to chop there a little bit, and that sounded that sounded awesome. Yeah, this cam is crazy. This is a what the BTR hot cam or something like Red that. Red hot cam, yeah. yeah Which is actually just their stage two, but it has a custom exhaust duration that they won't release, and that's what sounds absolutely awesome. This thing sounds mean. And yeah, a little bit more tuning, man. This thing yeah. is gonna rip, be ready to rip, it's gonna be good. All right, guys, it's been a couple weeks since the first start that you just saw. Obviously, it started, but had a few issues. Uh, it didn't stay running. Obviously, that was <laughs> the biggest one. And I wanna go over some of the issues that I found out and uh, what I did to correct them. And now we're gonna end up being on whatever. We're gonna start it again, call it the 10th start but I got most of the issues figured out and then hopefully gonna be going for a drive, test drive real soon. So let's talk about the issues. The first issue why the car didn't wanna stay running was actually the MAF sensor. Somehow in the tune, I forgot to change the MAF curve from the factory uh, LQ4 tune to the four inch tube for the LS3 style MAF card. I forgot to change that curve. So basically it was giving it two and a half times less fuel than it needed. So that's why I didn't want to stay running. So once I got that figured out, it actually started pretty good and uh, was running pretty decent, but there was still a few weird things going on. The car ran fairly decent, but I noticed on the headers that um, you can kind of see they're kind of golden colored. Uh, some of them, namely this one, cylinder number three, was basically still, you know, stainless steel color. I'll put in a picture here or here. But it, it looked like th that cylinder wasn't firing. And I was getting some odd codes as well. So 
I basically, you know, was trying to look at stuff through the tune. Uh, the O2 sensors were kind of all over the board and it di didn't seem right. So I was like, well, let's pull the plug and see what it looked like. So I'll put, again, put a picture of the plugs. And obviously you can see there's a major issue. Cylinder number three was not firing. It never was. It was not getting fuel at all. So that pointed me to the fuel injector. So I got a new fuel injector from O'Reilly. I ended up returning the one I got from Rock Auto and they exchanged it on a warranty, which I do got a new one now. So that's a spare, but I changed this, swapped the injector out for the O'Reilly one, fired it up and it definitely ran smoother then. So I was good to go. The cylinder started changing or the header started changing color right away. So we, are, we were good to go there. All right, so then next, I was trying to just get the, the idle dialed in and stuff, which that's a little finicky. But then I was actually pulling the car out, going down around a little bit on the road and just kind of putting around. And um, I could barely give it any throttle. With changing this the cylinder heads on this engine, I had to change some transient fuel settings in the tune to get it the throttle to respond actually. So I got that taken care of as well. So I could actually give a throttle now and it sounds much healthier. Um, and then I also had to, it was <laughs> a bunch of things. Um, it was showing burst knock. I had to turn burst knock off. I also had to uh, massage the knock sensors a little bit as it was pulling timing when you stab the throttle. And I, I barely, you know, changed them, but it was just enough to, to make it happen. And I was referencing plenty of other tunes and that's pretty standard with headers. You have to massage the knock sensor sensitivity a little bit because the headers are louder as far as the knock sensors are concerned. So I got that taken care of. It sounds really good and healthy now. But when I was putting around, then the next thing was it was staying in second gear. And I was like, oh crap, what's going on with this transmission? It wasn't working right. Here it turns out it looks like I was in limp mode on the transmission as it was only staying in second gear. So now troubleshooting that, um, I you know was making sure that it was getting power with the connector underneath, which I did that. It was getting power. Uh, what ended up being the problem was I took this front speed sensor out because I thought it wasn't needed. Well, it was freaking the computer out. I had all the codes turned off, but Apparently on maybe the Gen 4s, you can completely turn it off, but the Gen 3 ECU wasn't really allowing me to turn off that front speed sensor totally, and it was still freaking out. So I actually just plugged in that speed sensor with it dangling, not even in the transmission, and boom, it showed that it went to park and first gear like it should. So I haven't driven it since that, but I did get the uh, front speed sensor in back installed into the transmission. And then, <laughs> so that should be good to go. And then plus, the this is another issue that the ECU or the harness was pinned out wrong. Um, I was not getting correct signal on my transmission temperature sensor. Tracing that out, where that wiring was going, I used a multimeter on the pin that I knew it should be for the sensor up to the harness, and I just pinned every black wire that I could find, and I found which wire it was, and it was going to the wrong pin. Mine was going for the ground for this uh, temperature sensor, ended up going to like the EGR ground or something, which wasn't correct, and it needed to be pinned on the blue connector, pin 41. And so once I plug that in, boom, now my temperature is reading, even just plugging in the computer, not starting, uh, the temperature uh, looks correct. So we got all that changed. Obviously a bunch of issues that I had to work through, but now let's do another first start, another 10th start. And now you can actually get an idea of how this thing sounds with the Red Hot Cam, as it is pretty dang loud with the four inch exhaust. It sounds pretty mean. So um, yeah, let's hear it. 